I've been in the e-commerce industry for way too long, more longer than most of my team that works for me now. So um, I've got a lot of content here, and I've got a lot of experience, and I've kind of covered a lot of territory. I launched my first e-commerce site in 1995. Um, and since then, I've probably managed or ho uh, helped launch probably 45 or 50,000 different sites over my career. So um, I've seen a lot of things, done a lot of things, and I'll try to power through a lot of things. But there's basically some fundamentals in e-commerce that I'm just going to try to help you understand that are relevant not only just 20 years ago, but even, you know, last week. So a couple things, finding the customer, understanding the customer, creating the customer experience. Um, we'll talk about it, but if we can just kind of power through, I'll, I'll try to make quick work of this because I know there's still more beer in the back. Um, so one thing I want you to do is just understand focusing on how to find your customer. I mean, if you launch a store in Spot Shopify, you're you know an early stage business, and how do I create and find and understand who my customer is and where the heck to find them on the internet? The internet's this big thing, and I can launch a website, but that doesn't mean anybody knows who I am, where I am, or how to get me. So. Um, social media is a wonderful thing. Um, Facebook is somewhat of a downturn right now. Uh, Instagram is on an upturn. Snapchat's a new emerging that nobody's ever figured out how to monetize yet. Um, but it's working. And the thing of it is, is when you start looking at your social media group, that is an audience that is willing and interesting to explore your products and your business and your product and your company. And if you don't use that to your advantage, you're making a huge mistake. So that's your first audience that you have to look at is, is leverage that social media that is your own personal group. Because your mom will always come on your website and check it out and say, oh, it's wonderful, it's perfect, and tell all of her girlfriends. But that's not necessarily always the truth. So what you have to do is you know, be honest with yourself and be honest with the people that are interacting. Because the great thing is those same social group that you're working with uh, will be brutally honest with you. Uh, and you have to accept brutal honesty and be able to and be willing to change your product descriptions, your pricing, your presentation, your mode of delivery, whatever it is, because, you know, new and unknown customers to you won't be as honest. They'll just go somewhere else. They'll buy it from somebody else. So if you, if you leverage this group first, you'll get that brutal honesty and you have an opportunity to correct it. Now the great thing is you start using your employees' social network and their social network and, and as you start getting honesty and start creating humor and embrace change and, and tell people I changed my product description because somebody told me my sizing was horrible or my colors were wrong or, and just explain that to them and, and people will be like, oh, that's cool, at least they're honest with me, at least I know what I'm getting. And that makes a big difference on user conversion uh, down the way. So. Um, the other thing is uh, a lot of people like to try to think that Amazon can be ignored or these marketplaces can be ignored. And, and the, the story I like to tell people is I'm going to build this beautiful pop-up store on Fifth Avenue in New York City and there's a ton of traffic up and down Fifth Avenue, all these people wanting to spend money, but I'm going to tell everybody on the east side of Fifth Avenue that they cannot come across to my store and shop in my store. It's like telling everybody that's on Amazon that don't come find me. It's ridiculous, you know, to ignore and, and think that these things are going to go away or that audience shouldn't be try to be reached. Now, the trick is when you do embrace that, you have to understand your brand because it's it, when they're, you're, they find your product on Amazon, Amazon wants to make that customer theirs. But you're delivering that product to that customer, and now you're trying to make that customer yours. So part of it is, how, what kind of messaging can I put on my packaging, in the box, on the product, that reminds them of who that product came from? And you know whether it's a handwritten note, whether it's in a personalization, whether it's a coupon, what, no matter what it is, make sure that that consumer, when they receive that product that they bought from Amazon, they know it really came from you, and that they want to come back to you. Um, in my catalog days, I used to build competing companies to myself. Literally did. I had mailed two, you know, I, I would buy opposing ads in, in the back of trade magazines. And one company would advertise this product, and the other company would advertise that product. We were the same company, but the consumer didn't know it. But I can tell you, and, and it had to be really creative to make sure the call center guys watched the caller ID so that they didn't answer the same phone from the same, twice from the same customer. Because it got a little tricky. So you make sure the next guy sitting next to you answered it because this guy just talked to me and I was talking to him from Mac Direct and this is Airborne Computer Technology sitting next to me. Um, but what that did is it proved to me that customer loyalty has a, 
price tolerance within 20%. So if, if they've bought from you before, they're willing to spend as much as 20% more than what they find somewhere else to buy from somebody they know and have a reputation and have trust with. That's huge. That's massive profit difference. So you're not always having to chase price all the way to the bottom. You can actually retain price, but the first thing is you have to build that loyalty and create that customer. And you can do that through social media, too. Um, mining your existing customers is also a huge thing. Build a referral base. They've already bought from you. Hopefully, you gave them a good consumer experience. Ask them to tell their friends. Ask them to explore their social network. Ask them to do other things and reward them for it. Give them a, a, a discount. Give them a coupon because your cost of advertising and cost of solicitation and cost of, of marketing is going to be much higher than asking your existing customers. It says refer a friend and get 50% off. Refer a friend and get 20% off. Refer a friend and get this free gift, whatever it is. You know, leverage that because now their social network becomes an extension of your social network and your employee's social network, and it kind of compounds. So do that, and it, you will find huge dividends. And these are simple things that you can do now. I mean, you can do them all year long, but they're huge for this time of year because guess what? Everybody's trying to spend money right now. So why not leverage that now and encourage that now instead of having to do it all year long? And then international is a beast that will show up. I mean, we were talking earlier, uh, and, you know, Customers will find you whether you think you're only shot selling in the United States or not. So be wise about it, understand it, you know, uh, and do some research in advance. And there's some tools out there, and DHL's a good one uh, for a lot of things. But um, And then understand the customer journey. This is about optimizing consumer experience. And you heard that from my friend at Shogun a little bit, but I'm going to drive through some just really fundamental pieces that I see people screw up on all the time, including Amazon. So this is my biggest pet peeve. And it's everywhere right now. This is like taking a Walmart greeter and handing them a clipboard and telling them to stop every single person that walks in the door and ask them for a survey. Or ask them to give them your email address. Or ask them for something. My God, let them in the dang store. Let them in your environment before you start asking them for something. And if you do ask them for something, please, please, please give them something in return. You know, but don't do it the first second they walk in the door or attempt to walk in the door because, you know, this, it's like a big stop sign that says, no, 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 don't come in. You know, and you don't need to do that. And you don't want to do it. And I see it happen all the time. And this time of year, it's getting worse and worse and worse. The other thing is uh, artificial intelligence helps a lot of this, but this is a big one. If you've got a long catalog, take the time to build the subcategorization. Make it easier to navigate through and find the products. This happens in apparel, it happens in hardware. I'm sure in, in, in home goods it's the same thing. If you don't build adequate subcategorization, you're gonna end up with all these obscure things on the page because of limited search capabilities within your site. So take the time to subcategorize and allow your customer to do direct drive navigation through your categorization to get there. And then um, listing prices have to be, uh, or your pricing have to be present at the very first point that anybody finds anything relevant to a product. So don't just give the description of a product or the name of a product or something like that. Tell them the price. Because they're not going to navigate and drill down to, through to it until they understand what their final price is going to be. And don't ever just list the list price. Show them the net price. Don't make them guess as to what 20% off means. Show it to them. Okay. And then one of the things, I, it says track PDP conversions and user-generated contact impacts because that's true. Because once you have them on your product page, you have to know what's convincing them to put it in the shopping cart. What is actually working? Is it the image that you just put up that you just had you know, your crew produce? Is it the user-generated imagery that shows the product in real life? Is it the four easy payments from Sezzle, who I work for? Is it that's the driving you know, the customer to put it into the shopping cart? Understand what that is and test those things out because you'll find that uh, user-generated content in a lot of categories if you can show that handbag on a real person and not a supermodel, um, and, or you know, it gives it some scale, it gives it some size. How big is that handbag? I mean, is this a thing? Is this thing the size of a diaper bag, or is this a clutch? I don't know, you know. And I don't want to go to specs and everything else to figure that out. I just want to see a reasonable person holding this thing, and I want to have a relevant idea as to what this thing really looks like. So, and then you know, one of the things is. 
uh, another huge mistake a lot of commerce sites do is bury the shopping cart. How many times have you put add to cart and then can't find the dang cart? And you're searching the site and you find this little tiny icon in the upper right hand corner that no one can see without their bifocals, um, which I hold all the time for that very reason. You know, so don't bury the cart. I mean, if they said add to cart, my God, help them find the cash register. I mean, it's just insane. And then here's another good one. Okay, we talk about buying pants. Nobody likes buying pants. No one, not men, no women, and nobody. Okay, if I finally put a pair of pants in my shopping cart, don't tell me I picked the wrong ones. Okay, sell me some socks. Do something else, all right? <laughs> this is Amazon. They're screwing it up all the time. All right, and then, you know, when you're in uh, your checkout experience, give them the way they want to pay. Right? And Sezzle is a, a solution that allows a consumer to split it into four easy payments, and it works. It does drive increased conversion. It does drive increased insertions in the copy card. It does drive increased close ratio. But so does uh, Amazon Pay, and so does Apple Pay. But they're different, right? They're, they're, they're driving the customer for a different reason. You know, if I'm using Apple Pay, it's because it's convenient for me. And I know it's going to end up on my American Express card, and it's just boom, and it's done. You know? Why do we always use Uber? Because it's easy, you know? And that's why. And so give them the simple way out, and that's what you need to do. Because now you've got an opportunity. They're trying to buy your product. Make it easy. So, and then creating the best customer experience. Brand is everything. You know, repeat orders are everything. Lifetime value of a customer is critical in understanding. So as you drive through the customer experience, you need to um, go back and read your customer surveys. Understand what people really said. Don't just gloss over them. I mean, take a time to really listen about what they said about you and your business and what would change. Why did you only get four stars? What was the thing I missed? And did I now that I've made that change broadcast it to the world that I make a banner on my website and says, guys, we've been screwing up for two years on the way we've been doing this and we changed it. And so put it out there on the front page. Put it out there in your newsletters. Put it out there in your email subscription list. Put it out on your front page of your website that says, we've been doing it wrong all this time, and I apologize to all the customers that bought from me for before, but I won't do it to you again, and here's why. That's, that's huge. I mean, if somebody told me that, I'm listening. I want to know why exactly I'm going to shop with this guy, and I'm going to shop with them again because they're honest with me. And the same thing, your customer reviews will tell you the same thing. What's missing with that star? Why didn't I get it? Why isn't this perfect? What is part of my experience? What part of that product description just failed? Does it say that this thing falls over in a wind greater than five miles an hour, and that's why? Or, you know, anybody over five foot six is going to hit their head every single time? You know, what is the story? I mean, you know, what part of this description didn't, you know, create that five-star experience? And then, you know, listening to your customer is better to be done, not in surveys. So surveys sometimes are going to be brutally nice, but you're going to almost always hear just negative. But in their social experience, your girlfriends talking to each other, you know, they're going to give all kinds of different fluff than you're going to hear in a customer survey. So the social media response to a product versus a survey response to a product, absolutely different. And you've got to mind the differences and make your descriptions different and, and do that. And this is the stuff that really feeds back if you're going to post on Amazon and other things. If you draw that into your description and bury that within the contents uh, that you upload to Amazon, that will bring customers back to your brand. And then take on you know, the social media buying experience and, and plug those things in, in into your experiences. Don't just put an image out there. Do an image overlay. Explain what those things are. Those things are great. They're cool. It's interesting. I still saw the imagery, but now I know I have some, some context to it and reference to it. And, and those are great. And then within the brand itself, if you're going to use the marketplaces, which you should, because six out of ten product searches start on Amazon. Six out of ten. Okay? Fifty-five percent of transactions online were last year were Amazon. If you ignore that side of the street, you're spending a lot of money on real estate that isn't profitable for you. So... Uh, another shameless plug, so that if you want to use uh, Test Out Sezzle, uh, which you should, uh, we'll give you your first month free, and you'll find out how fabulously wonderful it is. So I hope that was helpful. I'll be here if you have questions.